Hello and welcome to The Quick Take here on the Fulhamish YouTube channel after our nil-nil draw away at Brentford. Um, we've had about an hour to, uh, to calm down after what was a pretty frustrating match at the GTEC Community Stadium. We're back in Clapham Junction, joined by Dan. Hello, mate. Hi, oh, Sammy. Frustrating is my word. Just came out of that match and just I felt like I wanted to punch a wall <laughs> with just how infuriating Fulham were. By far the best team. I don't think I'm being biased to say that today, but it's not like we missed loads of chances. We'll come on to a couple that we did miss, but we just missed so many chances to make chances. Yeah, and I felt like actually we we did okay in terms of controlling the game at sort of arm's length. I think my worry coming into today was that we would have like 75% of the ball and Brentford would just kill us on the counter-attack. And actually we did well to not let the game end up happening like that and it seemed intentional to me that we were keen not to have too much of the ball and be okay with Brentford having the ball because ultimately I think the more possession Brentford had the less dangerous they are they're the most dangerous like the first couple of passes if they set Mbomo in behind or Wisser in behind that's when they're dangerous but actually with you know we spoke about it Bassi and Diop controlled that game from a defensive perspective and it is just frustrating that I think everything outside of you know the final third we did well, but in the final third, oh my God, we were dreadful. <laughs> I mean, there's so many. There's a catalogue of kind of missed opportunities today. I mean, Fulham went close a couple of times. Uh, Awobi hit the bar. Moon is forced to save out of Flecken. Um, but, I mean, the big one that probably everyone is talking about or thinking about, I haven't stopped thinking about it since it happened, the Raul Jimenez miss. He has... So much time. He takes it first time on his left. He balloons it over. But, I mean, he had the penalty box to himself pretty much. It's. I know that, like, you know, strikers miss chances. It's a tale as old as time. But at this level, come on, man. Take a touch. That, I mean, that's purely confidence, though, isn't it? I think that is such a, a sign of, of man whose confidence is on the floor. He's been out injured. And... It's so frustrating because it didn't feel like Muniz needed to come off. And I'm so confident that Rodrigo Muniz buries that. Like, I'm just certain that he puts that away. And uh, it, it, I've, I, I like you, I've watched it so many times. And you just can't really explain it. Like, it's just everything's wrong with it. You know, he approaches the ball and he leans back and he opens his body up. And the technique's horrific. And we've laughed about it, but genuinely... I think that explains every single Rabona we've seen this season. Because the man does not have a left foot. Because if, if if that is why he's been Rabona crossing in in the 97th minute when we're chasing a goal, he maybe probably should have just done it this time. <laughs> 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 like, he maybe might have scored. But to miss, miss the target is, is just unfathomable. That's maybe the only way it could have got worse if he'd, re <laughs> if he'd rabona it over the bar. And I actually think people might have evacuated the away. I think people might have left the away end and gone on the pitch. That I, I haven't seen kind of scenes like that in a stand for such a long time where all Fulham fans just have a head in hands on the floor, hands in their faces. Uh, it was just, uh, it was like something out of the apocalypse. It, it felt like a moment where you can pinpoint the end of someone's career at a club. Like, I just don't, I don't know how he comes back from that. Like, not just in, because I still maintain that Raul's a, a fairly decent footballer. It's just coming back from that moment when you've lost an entire fan base. Like, he could score next week against City. And I don't think anyone's going to forgive him. Like, I think he's, I just, I don't know how he comes back from that. And, and the abuse he got. And we spoke about it. there were chants, people chanting for Rodrigo Muniz after he missed that chance because I think everyone was thinking the same thing. As I was saying, that it made no sense in that moment to bring Raul on. And if anything, it made more sense to bring on Broya than it did Raul. Uh, just a, a catalogue of errors from everyone that it ended up there. And it's so frustrating because Adama Troyer does brilliantly. Like, like I think that's going to get missed completely. He, he makes a great run. He bodies a Brentford player hilariously. And I feel like that's one of those things that could have been so beautifully clipped up if Raul just buries that, is this Brentford player going flying. Mm -hmm. He puts in a, a perfect ball into an area where you know it's going to cause chaos. And yeah, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. But, I mean, and look, firstly I'll say, Jimenez, I feel like, eventually managed to recover his reputation from some pretty bad moments earlier in the season. 
some of Fulham's wastefulness when they got into the final third. I thought we were just so brilliant in the middle of the pitch, the way we counted, the way we found space in the middle of the park. We we ran that midfield today. And then it would be like, right, we'd, we'd pass it, you know, Pereira would be running through or Awobi would be running through or Moonies would be running through or um, Willian would be running through. And you're just there like, felt every time we just took the wrong yeah. decision. Yeah. And some of those moments won't make it to match of the day because there was never a moment to actually an actual highlight but and Marco was losing his mind on the touchline at a few of them and he will do because effectively his game plan worked but players made poor decisions yeah the number of times we were surging through and like everyone's going left give it left and the ball goes right and then the next time you're like right go right and then it goes left and you just it, it, it did feel like that and it, we so frequently had what felt like sort of a four on four, a four on three, like runners and people driving. And that's in theory what we should be good at. And that's what we set up to do. And it's one of those things that's difficult to explain because it, the, some of the culprits, not to not to bash Andreas Pereira, but we know his decision-making isn't always the best. Yeah. You know, sometimes you'll see Andreas Pereira shoot for no reason. You're like, it's Andreas. But to see like Willian make the wrong decision on a few occasions to see Bobby when he came on make the wrong decisions. I, I trust Bobby Deckard over so much in a in a pinch moment of, you know, pass left, right or shoot to always pick the right option. And even he didn't today. It just, it felt like a collective thing of no Fulham player was quite at their best in an attacking sense. And it meant that everything just consistently fizzled out. And especially when you consider how airily dominant Brentford centre-backs were with crosses that kept on going into the box and it felt like on these counters all we were trying to do was work the ball out wide to put a cross into the box but we would just never look dangerous doing that and it just would have been good to see us try something different you know try not not just shift it out wide and hope someone beats Pinnock or Collins in the air actually try and get into the box and make something happen it just didn't I mean positives to take out of today I've, 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 as you said Bassi and Diop at the back just you know it was, it was a dangerous Brentford front line, Tony was playing and Bumo was playing. Well, <laughs> apparently he was playing. I didn't really notice him too much. But I thought that actually against a very, you know, it's a tough place to go, Brentford. And, and, and short of maybe a bit of attacking quality, which is obviously what we lack today, Fulham were the better team by a mile. And after last week against Palace, where we got a point, but we were definitely the worst team on the pitch, I was pleased just to see Fulham play well today. Obviously, overriding feeling is huge frustration. But if actually trying to think back a little bit rationally, we were very good value for lots of that match. Yeah, and I and like in fairness, I spent the whole run up to this game the, the past week just picturing us turning up and rolling over because it feels like that's what we've done over the past few weeks. And I was so concerned that we do it, and Brentford would be just be way more up for it than we were but actually commendable that we looked like we were up for this you know there was there was a fair few crunching challenges where it was it wasn't players shirking out of 50 50s because there's three games to go and nothing to play for it felt like they, the players on the pitch knew that they were in a derby game that mattered which is good and that 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 does lessen the pain and as, as you say, like the, the positives are, I think, Diop and Bassi. I'm still not entirely sold whether I think that should be our pairing next season. But I actually thought Diop was better than Bassi. And, and I need to give him credit for that because I've, I've said for the past few weeks since Tossin's said he was leaving that I don't think Diop's a solution as the replacement. But he was more controlled in possession. I don't think he put a foot wrong out of possession. Whereas... Calvin Bassey, I think, for 95% of the game was superb, but there were a few passes where you're like, mm, that, that felt like some of the start of the season Bassey sort of seeping in, where it's sort of aimless passes, maybe overly ambitious, whereas Diop felt fairly flawless and was always on hand to win headers in the box when crosses were coming in, snuffed out a few low balls into the box as well as the game sort of dragged on. So I think probably for me, it's the Diop man of the match, which, you know, what a what an arc, what a redemption arc from him and fair play because... The guy wasn't even in the squad like yeah. three weeks ago because he couldn't get into it. So for him to actually come out of that and stand up and be like, I can play, is, is commendable. I don't, would you give it to anyone else? I don't, I don't know who else I'd give it to. Well, I was coming to you next about who you should be a man of the match. And I was going to say that for me, I think it was Issa. 
I thought that Sasha Lukic and, and, and Xiao Polinia in the middle played well. I thought Xiao was the reason that we broke down a lot of Brentford attacks and, and broke forward. I thought he was as good as he, as he usually is. Maybe it's because it was such a standout today that Easy Diop was really, really impressive. He was a bit shaky last week against Palace, but I was really pleased to see him kind of back on song. Um, obviously, it was a derby today. We played four West London derbies this season. Two against the Blues, two against the Bees. We haven't scored in any of them. That's pretty tough to take, isn't it? I, and I know it's been a good season and all of that, but zero from four doesn't, doesn't, doesn't reflect well, does it? And these are the matches that mean so much to us. And yes, we got a point today. It wasn't a loss, but come on. No goals. Hey, and... Do you know what? I, I think this is probably the only game out, for, out of the four from memory where we maybe deserved a goal. I think yeah. it's like totally fair in those first three games that we got zero because we deserved zero. Um, I think we are just, we spoke about it on the train on the way here. I, we're just missing a, a goal scorer who isn't a centre forward. I think something that Silva's been great at through his time at Fulham is finding goals all across the pitch. And yes, we had the spearhead of Mitro and, you know, for the second half of the season, we've had Mooney's. But there were always players outside of that who you felt were good for a goal. Be that Harry Wilson or Carvalho or, you know, last season Pereira at times, eh, Willian. But this season, it's just felt like we're really relying on one source of goals. And that's concerning. I think if you just add someone into that mix, I, I'm thinking off the wing. I think that's where I'd like to see someone who you'd like... I'd feel confident in them scoring or, or to create chances, make things happen. And it just, that feels like where we're lacking. And that's that's my concern. And, and like, it's been the case of our season that uh, we just look a little bit impotent in attack. And at times you don't know really where the goal's going to come from unless it's coming from your centre forward. Yeah, weirdly, it's the most amount of goals we've scored in a Premier League season. But it feels like that's come from some real outliers where, you know, we've scored fours and fives in in games but actually <laughs> you look at this not four in in London derbies Fulham it feels like have struggled in so many matches to actually find the back of the net but yet in others seem so clinical uh, I mean uh, another thing that's probably worth mentioning at this point City and Luton to come City going for the title Luton fighting to stay up there's a chance that by the time we face Luton given results today they might already be down which might make it a little bit more winnable for Fulham but you've you got to say that there's two difficult games because of differing circumstances if we don't win either of them that's one win after the international break out of about eight nine games and that to me is stumbling over the line form even though there's been a few draws in there that make it a little bit more respectable yeah I'm I, I think we can maybe categorize this now as kind of limping towards the finish line which actually after that Spurs game I didn't think Fulham were going to do well I, I was compelled to look at this last week as it just feels like we've done this every year under Marco Silva and I'm not necessarily leveling blame at Silva for this I think it is as a a result of where he's taken us to in the first three quarters of the season that means our last quarter of the season ends up sort of fizzling out but our, by far our worst period of the season over three years on average is April April and May are like where Fulham just tail off and it's a shame because I think we look at it and we're like oh, okay it's it's okay because we had things tied up we did what we needed to do and we tailed off but I feel like this season we might look at it as a, and, and like last season just a little bit of a mischance just a little bit of like I know we achieved what we needed to achieve this season, but the way things have gone above us, just two, three or four more wins from games that we should have been winning. Not try, I'm not saying we needed to, you know, we should have beaten Liverpool. It's games like Palace at home, Brentford away, where if you start to add up those wins, Burnley away, Sheffield United away, suddenly we're back up in that top half. We're back in contention for potential European spots. And so whilst I still think 13th or 14th is still a successful season. It's, it's always like a what if. It's just like a bit of like a, mm, yeah, we've done what we needed to do under difficult circumstances, but it could have been more. Yeah. 
All right, well, that'll do for the quick take today. Uh, make sure you check out the podcast, which is going to be out on Monday, if, uh, if you can bear it, uh, for more reaction to today's draw. Uh, hit subscribe on the channel if you haven't already, and let us know what you thought of the game in the comments. Dan, thank you. Thank you very much, Samu. And we'll see you soon. Come on, you whites.